Expedition 39 will return NASA astronaut Steve Swanson to the International Space Station for the third time. His previous flights were aboard space shuttles Atlantis and Discovery, delivering and installing station truss segments and solar arrays. Steve calls Steamboat Springs, Colorado home. The father of three enjoys camping, trail running, mountain biking, and skiing. He will take over as Expedition 40 commander in May. Soyuz Commander Alexander Skortsov spent 176 days in space in 2010 when he served as an Expedition 23 flight engineer and as Expedition 24's commander. While training for his first long-duration space mission, he was also studying law at the Russian Academy of Civil Service. He received his law degree in 2010. This Moscow native's hobbies include diving, travel, soccer, and hunting and fishing. He and his wife have one daughter. Latvian-born first-time space flyer Oleg Artemia was selected as a cosmonaut in 2003 and began his land and water survival training in 2005. He's participated in two isolation experiments for the Mars 500 project, one lasting 105 days. Oleg and his wife and son reside in Coriolan. In his spare time, he enjoys traveling, skiing, and diving. The Soyuz spacecraft carrying Steve, Alexander, and Oleg to the station will launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan in late March. Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us here at the Johnson Space Center with our newest crew headed to the International Space Station. Steve, Alex, and Oleg, thanks again for joining us as well. So that was a great video with a good intro, but I think probably everybody would like to hear and learn a little bit more about each of you. So Steve, we'll start with you. You actually worked here at the Johnson Space Center before becoming a NASA, uh, NASA astronaut. You worked out at aircraft operations on the shuttle training aircraft. Can you tell us a little bit about that job? Sure, I'd love to. The shuttle training aircraft was an airborne simulator of the shuttle. It was a Gulfstream G2, and it had the ability to, uh, I guess, do exactly what the shuttle does uh, for the landing from 35,000 feet to ground. And it was a great training aid for the astronauts to land a shuttle. And it was fun to work on that vehicle. I got to work on the control laws, and at the same time also was a flight engineer on that vehicle. It was a great job. And how many years did you do that? I did it for 11 years. Wow, okay. And then you went on to two shuttle missions, uh, ultimately visiting the International Space Station each of those times. I'm just curious, at that time when you were visiting, were you already starting to think about doing a long duration mission and working and living there, or was that something that developed later? No, I wanted to at that point. Each time I got there, I didn't want to leave. I mean, it was only two uh, week trips, so it was uh, too short for me. So I would want to stay longer, so I thought about it at that time, of course, going for a long duration one. Gotcha. Well, this is going to be a great mission. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right, so we'll turn it over to you to tell us a little bit about your crewmate. Sure. First here is Alexander Skorsov. He is a military pilot uh, through three different types of vehicles, uh, over 1,000 hours of flight time. As I said before, he was a, he flown once before to the, ex, to the ISS as uh, a commander of Expedition 24. Uh, anything else you would like to add, Alex? <laughs> Not <laughs> Next is Oleg Artemyev. Uh, as I said again before, he uh, was a, a test engineer at Roscosmos, sorry, at Energia, uh, and he became a cosmonaut in 2000, and, or a cosmonaut candidate in 2003, and a cosmonaut in 2005. And he's been training with us for the last two years. It's been a wonderful time. I enjoy both of these guys very much. We have a good time together. I can tell already. So the launch is coming up. We're just about two months out. What lies ahead for you as you uh, close in on the uh, launch date and Okay, for me, I uh, have a, few, a little more of a week of training here left in the United States, and then I'm going to go to Germany for a week, uh, come back for another week of training here, then I'm going to go to Russia for the last uh, six weeks. And then when I go to Russia, I'm going to meet up with these guys, and we're going to start our last set of sims uh, for the preparatory uh, last phase of the training, where we have the exams in Russia, and then we get a week off, and then down to Baikonur for two weeks, and then the launch. Wow, it sounds like it's still busy and uh, It is fast very busy paced. until the very end, and right. we get a little bit of rest at the very gotcha. end. Gotcha. And just for folks, that launch is March 25th at Here, uh, yeah, just after 4 p.m. local Houston time. So, Okay, well, with that, we'll turn it over to uh, media and visitors here at the Johnson Space Center for questions. So if you'll just raise your hand, state your name and affiliation if you're a reporter, and just wait for the microphone to arrive. We'll start here with Mark. Thanks, uh, Mark Corot for Aviation Week. I think this is for uh, Steve. Um, there's, uh, there may be a backlog of spacewalks that you're facing, I don't know, but it's been a while since uh, you could do more than contingency spacewalks. Could you sort of explain what you're anticipating 
um, and if there are some waiting your yeah. arrival, kind of what you'll be doing in that arena? It's a good question. Right now there's tentatively two spacewalks in Expedition 40. Uh, we don't know for sure exactly how it's all going to play out, but that's on the books right now. Uh, they mostly consist of uh, backing out of the situation we had with the a leak on the ammonia system out on uh, P6. And that was uh, Sonny and Aki worked on that, and, uh, and then later on uh, Chris Cassidy and Tom Marshburn worked on that also, and they actually got the leak stopped. So now we're going to put that situation back into a normal config at the, now that the leaks uh, stopped and refill the ammonia. That's one of the tasks. There's another task about cleaning up uh, or getting ahead on some areas and changing out some of the lights and cameras, and that's another possible EVA we would have too. Uh, but again, those are all dependent upon the suits getting fixed and getting all cleared for, for uh, going out the door. Okay, Robert? Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com. Sort of working off Mark's question, uh, can you uh, go through what spacecraft you're expecting in terms of commercial cargo and, uh, and Russian and other vehicles that you might see during your stay? Sure. Um, we have uh, two progresses I know are going to come up, at least while we're there. And then uh, for the uh, U.S. vehicles and the uh, European, we're going to have a uh, Orb 2 is going to be there, SpaceX 4, and ATV 5. That's the current plan. Okay, we have a follow-up on that. Uh, yes, Mark Caro for uh, Aviation Week again. Uh, perhaps even in broad strokes, could you talk about research, science themes, kind of what you see coming your way that... Um, that rises kind of the top in terms of demand and um, on your time and, and interest? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, you know, there's over 170 experiments going on. We've been trained in a lot of them. A very, of course, to ones we don't even touch, as you know, and to ones that we are, are the technical operator on, but then we don't really do anything but start it up and get it set to go. And there's ones that we are the actual subjects on, too. And so that varies a lot in those. For me, the ones I guess I'm most interested in are the ones that I'm doing, of course. Uh, the ones that are on me, I guess, are more, uh, I guess, again, in, in detail on what I would know. And those, and those have to do with uh, the ocular health, you know, what's happening to our eyesight. And of course, also just working on uh, muscle atrophy and bone loss, those two uh, areas of interest. My name is Liliana. All I wanted to just ask you, what is it like to be on the moon? Well, that's a good question. I've never been there. I'd love to go. And hopefully someday we'll get back to the moon. I do hope so. Okay. <laughs> How long does it take your body to recuperate oh, be after a mission? Sure, coming back from long duration. Actually, Sasha, would you like to answer that one at all? Because he's done a long duration. I haven't done a long duration yet. And maybe uh, you could answer how, how long it took you to get back after your last mission. <coughs> and he might use Russian, so we'll help translate. Uh, I can, uh, I can uh, answer in Russian language. In his, uh, yeah, don't translate. Can you help me? У нас есть такая, как бы уже есть такой опыт, что между космонавтами, что мы считаем, сколько ты летал, столько тебе надо восстанавливаться на Земле. Это вот как бы получается 50-50. То есть 170 суток ты в космосе, практически столько же ты должен устанавливаться на Земле. Ну, for example, my next, my next previously fly was 176 days, and approximately the same days I have to... Is to re re rehab himself for 170 days. How long he stayed up there is how long he had to rehab and work out to get back to 100%. Thank you. It is cool. It's a lot of work, but it's also fun. OK. All right, we have another question here in the back. Hello, my name is Joshua, and I was just wanting to ask you, how do you stay healthy and not get sick in space? Well, that's a good question, too. Uh, one, we work out a lot. We work out at least two hours a day. We do a cardio from a treadmill to a bicycle. And then we also have a, a device we use that's like lifting weights. And we do that every day, too. And besides that, before we go, we're also in a quarantine so we won't get sick from somebody else. We won't bring up any germs with us as we go up. So hopefully we start off healthy and then we stay healthy the whole time. 
Okay. Any other questions? Just raise your hand. Okay, we have one more back here. Um, hi, I'm Billy. And how thick is the glass on the space station? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't really know, but I know it's more than one pane of glass. <laughs> we have at least two to three, depending on the situation. So we always have a, a factor of safety in that, that glass. So in case one goes, it's not going to take away the station. Okay, and I think um, we're also accepting He's questions. Got one over there. Go ahead. Can't see you back there. <laughs> My name's AJ, and what do you have to study to be an astronaut in college? Uh, that's a good question. What do you have to study to be an astronaut in college? Well, all of us, we did uh, technical stuff, and that's really what it boils down to. It could be science, it could be math, uh, some sort of engineering. It really doesn't matter specifically the field, but it has to be in that area. And then the idea being that uh, you, you want to, to learn how things work and how things operate, and that makes you a better operator yourself when you can understand how it all works together. OK, so just a second. I think we want to get in some social media questions. We've been accepting uh, questions via Twitter. Amika, did you have a few you want to share? Yeah, I have a couple. Sure. Hi, guys. I have one that uh, act actually each of you may want to take a turn and, and try to answer this one. And this one comes to us on Twitter. What aspect of living aboard the ISS are you most looking forward to? And uh, do you have any primary mission goals? I guess I'll start off. The aspect I look forward to the most is floating. I enjoyed it tremendously on my last mission. It's just the idea of uh, the floating in space was so much fun for me. It was like a, being a kid on the best playground in the world. And so I enjoyed it tremendously. Uh, aspect is just uh, uh, doing our science work, doing, keeping the station going, and, and having fun. Sasha? <coughs> сравнить после прилета состояние станции, которое было во время моего предыдущего полета, и э, вот сейчас. И я думаю, что я ожидаю от работы нашего экипажа того, что мы сможем э, поддержать состояние станции в таком, э, ну, так, в таком именно состоянии, наверное, вот, что оно будет не хуже, когда мы улетим. То есть я хочу хорошей, нормальной работы, штатной, без экстремальных э, ситуаций. Ну, чтобы все у нас происходило так, как мы, чтобы все текло и происходило, чтобы у нас была нормальная рабочая обстановка на станции. This time I'll be able to compare the state of the International Space Station, the way it is right now, with what it used to be when I flew there last time, my first time. And as far as our goals go, I'd like to maintain the station in good condition and leave it at least not worse than uh, the way we found it. And as regards our activities, the tasks we're supposed to do, I hope uh, it will all go nominally, it will all be well with no off normal situations, no emergencies, and hopefully it will uh, last for a long time. Okay. I look forward to my new home, to my new job, and I look forward for a sp to a space walk for my, uh, to my extravehicular activity. I hope we do have one and I'll be able to participate in it. Okay, great. Did you have another? Thank you. Uh, we do have another question here. Um, this one relates to uh, the science research. So what science research, research is planned for Expedition 39? Well, there's lots of science that pointed out over 170 different experiments going on on, on this International Space Station. And uh, I think it's, uh, they, they range from a multitude of different things. Uh, so I like, one I like, because I did some physics back in school, and I like the uh, alpha magnetic spectrometer. That whole idea to me is very fascinating. The idea that we're trying to find, you know, is there any matter? Is there dark matter out there? Dark energy? And how did the universe actually begin? That kind of basic physics questions are quite intriguing to me. And I think being able to find that out is going to be fantastic. Interesting. Um, we do have another question. This one actually comes to us on Facebook uh, for Chris, from Chrissy Milley. She wants to know, do the crew members use specifically made tennis shoes for the ISS treadmill? Or is it up to each member's preference? Up to each member's preference. We just go down to the local store, tell them which ones we want, and uh, that's what we get. Okay, one last question. 
Uh, this one, I think, comes from uh, some of the hikers out there that we learned from your profile, you're a hiker. So uh, how do you compare exploring and even camping on Earth with exploring in space and living aboard the International Space Station? Well, I find them very similar. Uh, I do expect, especially on a shuttle mission, that was very similar to a camping trip. I mean, it was, uh, uh, you sleep in a sleeping bag, you eat pretty much camping food, you dehydrated, meals ready to eat type food. We ate all that. Uh, it was a busy mission. And it was all about uh, keeping yourself uh, fit and able to do your job, just like you have on any expedition. You have to be uh, good to take care of yourself, take care of your stuff, and then you can actually work on the mission. It's the same idea, camping versus uh, space flight. So all those parallels all go together very similarly. The difference is what you do in your not really free time, not when you're taking care of yourself. You know, in the station, we're going to work on a science and keeping the station going. When you're hiking, camping, you can go off for other hikes and go find wood or whatever else. It's different. Besides that, though, it's pretty much similar. The views? The, the views you'll get. The views, uh, they're quite nice. Uh, I guess when you're on top of a mountain looking down, it's quite majestic, too, and all that. However, it's just a little bit better when you're up higher. OK, thanks. And again, a reminder for folks, they can use hashtag AskNASA, and we'll be screening for questions, and uh, including a few more of those as we go along. And I believe now we have some questions from the Kennedy Space Center, so we'll switch over to there. Kennedy Space Center, we're ready for your questions. Or not. Uh, yes, uh, my name is James Tutton, and I'm from the Valencia Voice. Um, I have a question for Stephen. How have you prepared for taking command of the ISS? Well, how do you prepare? It's not you know, something you do, I think, just right at one moment. You've been doing it for most of your life. Uh, all the things you've done leading up in your life help you prepare for something like this. As for NASA, I've had different jobs with different responsibilities that help me out. But most of all, it's just uh, learning from other people how they do it, talking to them, uh, and just uh, going through all the experiences we've had, I think, helped me in that job. OK, I believe we have another follow-up from Kennedy Space Center. Kennedy Space Center, we are waiting your question. OK, we're just going to move back on. We'll return back here to the Johnson Space Center. And I believe we have a follow-up. Let's see, where's our microphone? Right here in the front row. Or we can start back there. It's fine. <laughs> uh, Gina Sinceri, ABC News for Swanee. Um, are you looking forward to maybe getting a spacewalk? Oh, sure. <laughs> Tell me about that. Yeah, getting a spacewalk would be fantastic. As Oleg pointed out, it's uh, always a goal for every astronaut to, to get a spacewalk. Uh, I've done four so far. I've been very privileged. I appreciate that uh, opportunity. Uh, and to do it again would be great. It's the idea of going out. Uh, one, it's a very busy time, though, and it's very kind of stressful. But at the same time, it's a fantastic thing to do. You get the views are amazing out there. And uh, it's uh, something that, uh, I don't know, just uh, it, it uh, it's hard to describe because it's so different than anything else, but just the idea of going out in your own little space vehicle yourself and working on the station, making it better, and also just relaxing and seeing the whole Earth below you is a, is a fantastic thing. Okay, and Mark, you have a follow-up. Uh, thanks again, Mark Corot for Aviation Week. I have a cosmonaut question. Uh, when are you anticipating the arrival of the MLM, and uh, will you be doing any spacewalks to... Um, uh, in 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 relation to that, ну я теперь могу уже с уверенностью сказать, что нашей экспедиции МЛМ не придется принимать, хотя мы очень сильно к этому готовились, и наша экспедиция была посвящена как раз приему МЛМ. Uh, I can state right away that uh, our increment will not see the arrival of the MLM module, even though we had been preparing for it, and uh, we were looking forward to it. Была очень большая работа проведена по нашей подготовке для того, чтобы именно принимать его. И там помимо MLM был еще и робот-манипулятор европейский. Мы должны были его приводить в жизнь, так сказать. Поэтому с Олегом 
очень много трудились, работали, и должно было по первым подсчетам даже по порядка семи выходов, потом четыре, пять выходов, потом четыре выхода, но вот сейчас на данный момент уже немножко поменьше. And, uh... МЛМ не, в нашей экспедиции, я уверен, не будет. А пока что, насколько я знаю, он официально на 15-й год, да? Our preparation did actually involve lots of work for the upcoming module and also the upcoming manipulator robot for Europe. And uh, the number of spacewalks was significant at the beginning. It was seven, then numbers raised to five, then four, and now there'll be nothing associated with the MLM arrival. And uh, I believe that an ML module is currently scheduled for 2015. Okay, and now we're going to switch to the phone bridge where we have Miriam Kramer with Space.com. Hi, thanks. Yep, uh, Miriam Kramer with Space.com. I am just curious, is the, uh, are, are the tests, or the pre-launch tests in Russia before you guys uh, blast off in uh, March, are, are those nerve-wracking experiences? Do you, does it feel kind of like cramming for finals, or is it like a very long and steady sort of preparation so you're ready for those kinds of tests? Thanks. I'll start. Uh, I think the big thing we have to do is the exams in Russia uh, beforehand. And they're about, uh, about four weeks before we actually launch. And those are somewhat nerve-wracking. We're uh, graded very heavily on those, and very, uh, and, but they're also they make sure that you are ready to go. So it's it's a good thing to do. Uh, but after that, it becomes a lot easier. We get a week off, and then we get to go down to Baikonur. And the, the schedule at Baikonur is not too busy. We were just doing our last minute uh, prep items. We're just kind of getting ourselves all ready mentally, and uh, so it's not too busy at that point. Sasha, no. <coughs> Для того, чтобы сдать эти экзамены, мы готовимся практически всю нашу космическую жизнь. Вот. И, конечно, когда ты назначен экипаж, уже непосредственно готовишься к экзаменам, которые будут э, важны для тебя в предстоящем полете. Ну, как показывает опыт, э, космонавты, которые уже находятся в основном экипаже, они готовы сдавать экзамены, и комиссия потом выносит свое решение о готовности. Uh, frankly speaking, you prepare for these exams during your entire life as a cosmonaut, but once you're a member, a crew member, a member of a specific crew, the exams deal mostly with the upcoming increment to which you're assigned. And uh, the main crew are always ready for those exams, and uh, the commission at the very end uh, surely will approve everybody and uh, will have our exams passed. <coughs> Конечно, приятный момент, что после вот этой напряженной, так сказать, экзаменационной сессии, вот как раз неделя, э, есть возможность неделю отдохнуть с семьей, нам предоставляют такую возможность. Мы обычно отъезжаем со звездного городка э, в какое-нибудь специальное место, подготовленное для нашего отдыха, и просто вот наслаждаемся крайними днями общения с семьей, с друзьями. But the pleasant thing after these uh, intensive exams and this week of exams is uh, a week off with family. Or we get to go someplace out of uh, uh, the star city and, uh, uh, and we relax there. Okay. okay, I believe we have another social media question. Um, this one comes to us on Twitter from Mario Gonzalez. He wants to know, do you have an eight hour work day up there or how do you separate work and life up there? I guess basically you're living in your office. Yeah, it's a true statement. We do live where we work. It's a little different. The commute short, which is nice. Uh, but the way we look at it, we have a daily planning conference every morning and every evening. It's about 12 hours apart away. And so the idea there is that we work, we'll do a little prep beforehand, but really we work from the beginning of that to the end of that, uh, from the morning daily planning conference to the evening daily planning conference. And we'll work the whole time during that, and that's including working out. That's all scheduled in there. And after that, then it's kind of our time. So we get a little time off each day to keep us going and kind of help uh, rejuvenate ourselves. Thank you. And uh, we do have another one here. This one comes from Lloyd Campbell of New York. How do you prepare for spacewalks when none are planned? Shuttle mission walks were mission specific where ISS ones would not be? Yeah, what we do then is we call it skills-based training. So we still go into the pool, the neutral buoyancy laboratory, and we, we prepare for all sorts of different uh, failures of the station or possible spacewalks we're going to do. And 
at that time. So even though it's not doing an exact one, we do a multitude of different things and we just work on the skills necessary to do any of them. And then when it comes time for one in our space, we'll get all the information we need to do that specific spacewalk while we're up there. Okay, good questions. All right, in just one moment. I think we have one back in the back of the room. I do, another one for Swanee. A lot of your colleagues are judged by their social media skills as well, Twitter, et cetera, you know, singing, playing, washing your hair. What are you going to do? I mean, uh, I, the I, challenge I can't is tough. With those guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nope, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I don't have the, 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 the guitar skills or the singing skills. Uh, you know, I'm just an engineer. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> and that's, uh, so, uh, no, but I, I'm just going to have uh, fun and try to do outreach with kids and, and do that kind of stuff and just do my job. And, and uh, I, that's about all I can do. Well, and the view can't be beat, so you are going to share things true, on Insta I will do Instagram, Instagram, right? Instagram. We have a new Instagram, Instagram account. Yes, um, exactly. So everybody can follow your mission. You're going to start, I think, this week. Yes. Leading up to the launch on, on, on Instagram, ISS is the best way, I think, right. for folks to follow. So. We're, we're counting on seeing some great exactly. photos. Okay. And any other questions in the back? Okay. I think we have, I thought I saw a hand. Right here. Okay. We can get the microphone up here. How do you communicate with others while you are in space? How do we communicate with others while we're in space? Well, that's a good question. We first, our very first communication is with the mission control teams on the ground. And there's ones across the whole world. There's one in Houston here. There's one in Moscow. There's one in Huntsville, there's one in Japan, there's uh, one in Germany. So we communicate with all those ones around the world to get our job done. But then when we have free time, we can also uh, pick up, kind of do a sort of phone call to some people, and we can call them and talk to them for a little bit while we're up there. And that's really nice to do, to be able to call your, your home, talk to my kids, my wife, and all that. And it makes me feel uh, more connected to them during the space flight. Okay. We have a question in the back. I'm AJ, and when did you decide you wanted to be an astronaut? When did I decide I wanted to be an astronaut? Another good question. So I didn't do that when I was very young. A lot of astronauts do that when they're young, but I was more when I was graduating from a, a graduate school with my master's, and I decided that I really had to get a job. It was one of those big things in life. <laughs> And so I decided to really start looking and really thinking about what I wanted to do. And I knew that I wanted something that was mentally challenging. So somewhere in the sciences again, I thought that would be good. But then I also wanted something maybe that could be physically challenging and had adventure and all that. And that's when I kind of came across the old idea of being an astronaut. And that's when I started heading down that path. Okay, another question. How high can you jump? On the moon. There's a good question, because I was hoping you were going to say that, because on, on Earth, I'm not very good. <laughs> so on the, on the moon, you have one-sixth the gravity we have here. So hopefully, I'd be able to jump quite a bit higher. I could actually do better than Michael Jordan, right? If I was on the moon and he was on Earth, let me put it that way. And when we're actually in on a, an International Space Station, we, we can uh, push off from anywhere and just keep going. You can basically jump as high as the vehicle lets you go, which is another great thing. I, I, when my first trip, I bought a little Nerf basketball with me and a, and a Nerf hoop, and I would play basketball. And I could go all the way through the whole module like I was flying through the air and whipping it around, do 360s and all that, and then dunk it. So I felt pretty good about that until I came back and back to reality. Okay, and I think we have another question back there. Hello, my, na Hello, my name is Joshua. And what do you drink in space? We drink the normal drinks. We uh, water. It could be tea. It could be coffee. But the way we do most things, if it, it's not just water, we have a bag and it has the dehydrated mixture, just like you would have, you know, instant anything. Uh, so you mix water with it, shake it up, and then you drink it. Do you have anything else? Just uh, same, same. Okay. Yep. Okay. I think we have another question up here up front. Um. Hello, my name is Camber, and I want to be an astronaut. So what training do you need to become an astronaut? What training do you need to become an astronaut? Again, the, well, I guess one of the very first things is schooling. You do well in school, and work on a science or math degree, something in that area. And at the same time, I like to consider being well-rounded, like do a sport like what you're doing. Do something like that again 
to keep yourself well-rounded in everything you do, because we do want to be physically fit also to be an astronaut. It does help there. And all other do other things. If you like music, get into music too. The more things you can do, I think the better person you can become and the more chances you'll have to become an astronaut. OK, and I think we have one last question. Back up to the front. <laughs> We're giving Karen a workout. Um, how long does it take your body to recuperate after a mission? Okay, um, I'll just give, I'll answer that one quickly. For my shuttle flights, yes, is, uh, um, it took me for a short duration flight, it took uh, probably about two weeks, same idea how long the mission was and how long it took me to recuperate all the way and to get my strength back and to feel like I was normal again. Okay, and I think we have one last question, then we're going to have to wrap it up right there. How do you control your waist in space? My weight? Yeah. Well, we work out. It's a good question, uh, how we control our weight. Just, I guess, by working out and eating healthy as best we can. We, our meals are kind of determined for us before we even leave. So we eat what's given us, which is all pretty healthy food, and then we work out on a daily basis. So that makes us not get too heavy. Okay. Oh, sorry. The Russian yeah. segment has a special piece of equipment that allows us to weigh ourselves and to control our body mass. Это происходит в очень интересной такой ситуации. Это рано, рано утром все приплывают по очереди в российский сегмент и взвешиваются. Мы составляем таблицу и отправляем потом на землю доктора. And that may look weird because uh, early in the morning all the crew members would uh, gather in the Russian segment and uh, measure their weight and then fill out a specific table which is sent to the ground. All right, well, that's going to conclude our briefing. For more information on the mission, visit www.nasa.gov station. And of course, follow them on Instagram. We are awaiting those great photos. You can follow them on the ISS account on Instagram. And uh, thank you all for joining us today. <laughs>